if you will look at the third thing under full committee, which says January 23rd full committee meeting, that will have the agenda. Or so I've been told. And the, this is an organizational meeting we will not undertake to do any business today. And uh, the first thing on the agenda is the introduction of new members. And I think everybody but Burt Reeves is here. But we shall see. Uh, Patty Bentley, where are you? Welcome, Patty. Shaw Blackman. Shaw. John Corbett. I feel like I'm at a tennis match. All right, Spencer Fry. Bert Reeves, his father is in the hospital today, and so Bert's gone to be with his father. Trey Rhodes, Sam Watson. Welcome to all of y'all. Um, this is a working committee, and uh, y'all are on this committee because y'all have led us to believe that you will work. So uh, we expect y'all to do that, and uh, we're going to have uh, a lot of fun this year. We've got a lot of projects that we're going to work on, and. Um, any of the members on the committee, if 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 y'all want to try your hand at some legislation and don't have any legislation, we've got some that we can assign to you, either which may be Department of Revenue bills or whatever, but to give you a, a taste of, of doing legislation in the Ways and Means Committee. So please let me know if you're interested in carrying any bills. Um, we have on the agenda, if you will, go back to the former page and then look at the committee rules which are second on the list. The next item on the agenda are adoption of the committee rules. These are pretty much the same as last year's rules with a few tweaks but no substantive changes. The, the, the committee is organized into five subcommittees. We have the uh, sales tax subcommittee, income tax subcommittee, ad valorem tax subcommittee, uh, the Public Policy and Finance Subcommittee and Tax Reform Subcommittee. And uh, all of the subcommittee chairs are ex officio members and ex officio chairs of every other committee so or a subcommittee so that if Ron Stevens' committee, he's not available or if he has a uh, conflict because he may be presenting a bill, then Brett Harrell or I or David Knight or anybody else that is a subcommittee chair can can chair that meeting. And so uh, we've got plenty of able people to chair meetings, and so there should not ever be a problem in getting a bill heard. The general policy is, is that uh, there will be at least two subcommittee meetings on every bill. We can waive it if the bill is, is simple or if it's something that we've heard before and we're just tweaking it or updating it. But most bills will have at least two full subcommittee meetings before they can move on to full committee. I expect all the work to be done at the subcommittee level and us just to do a final yay or nay at the committee level. If it's not quite ready and needs some more work, it'll be sent back to the subcommittees. But all the work's going to be at the subcommittee level. Every member of the committee will serve on at least three of the five subcommittees. And so, uh, which will keep everybody involved in pretty much everything that's going on rather than only a fourth of the people or a fifth of the people knowing what's going on in the committee. And, um, and we will generally schedule the subcommittee meetings as much as possible back to back so that if you're on three subcommittees, there's a good chance that your subcom you won't have to go to a subcommittee meeting and then come back three hours later for another subcommittee meeting, there's a good chance that your subcommittee meetings will be back to back. Um, so anyway, if, uh, if there are any questions about the subcommittee or the committee rules, we can discuss them now. If not, I would entertain a motion. Do pass, Mr. Chairman. All right, there's a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? They passed. And we've talked about the committee organization and subcommittee assignments. Um, the next thing we do, and this is f pretty much an instruction, we're trying to go paperless in ways and means because it, there's a, it's a lot of work with tax bills being anywhere from, you know, two to 22 pages long to uh, try to make and collate 
copies of five or six different bills for everybody on the committee or everybody on a subcommittee. And then after there is a change in those to uh, then redo the whole thing and, and do additional copies. And so we're going to try to have all of our bills on the iPad for every meeting. The agendas will be on there. You can hot key, hopefully, from the agenda to the, uh, to the bills that we will be discussing and uh, even see prior versions. Uh, the, the iPads belong to the committee, and so you will not be allowed to check your iPad out. It will be furnished to you at the committee meeting, and then you will leave it here at the end of the committee meeting. And so if there, the bills will be in such a way that you can make notes, if you want to, on the iPad, and then you can send that bill with the notes to your personal email so that you can keep your notes and they'll be saved. So uh, anyway, at this time, I'm going to ask Brian if he will... Uh, give us a little short course on how our iPads work so that uh, we will all be proficient. Where are you? I think if you look at the screen on the side, if Brent could drive for me, you can see on the bottom of our committee page, there's a meetings agenda. If you can click on that, that brings you on your iPads or anybody else with an internet connection can see all these, which is different than last year where people in the audience had to have their own paper copies. So now you can come in and get your own copies through this link, which is the same that we're using up here. Uh, on the iPads, when you click on it, it'll come up and you'll have to tap the screen and click more. And that'll give you the option to go into Adobe, the Adobe program and inside of the Adobe program is where you can do all of your either writing with your finger on the screen or typing out notes in a text box on the actual document. And then from there, when you save it, you'll have the option to send it to an email address. And it'll come from a the uh, ways and means iPad number, whatever you have, at gmail.com they are all assigned to an individual email address. So that's how you get them sent to yourself. How you track them within your email to be able to print it off or do what you want with it after that. It, you can, any number of ways to be able to do that, but we can talk to you separately if you want to have some additional info on how to set it all up, but for the most part, it's going to be playing around with it if you're not too familiar with the iPads and getting yourself familiar with it to be able to do it in a quick and proficient manner. But we are all willing to help in any way, so just let us know if you want some questions answered or need more guidance. All right, that's sort of an overview. I'm sure that all of us are going to need a little bit of individualized instruction. Uh, Brian will be av available for tutoring, and uh, the iPads are all locked up in his office, so uh, feel free anytime committee members, anybody that, that is a regular at Ways and Means and who has had to uh, uh, sign in to speak, there will be, I think, electronic Yeah, we're working on doing an electronic sign-in for witnesses to come in and put your information in one time, enter all of your info, name, address, email, phone number, all of your contact info, and then the next time you come in, you'll be able to bring that back up just by searching your name. And you'll click on a bill, decide, yes, I want to speak on this bill, no, I don't, I'm in favor, I'm not in favor, you know, however you want to do, and then we'll see the list up here so we can choose pick if we have four in favor four not we can decide how best to get through those and it gives us a record of who's here and whether people want to or don't want to speak uh, we are in the process of getting a computer set up in the back of our uh, conference room to try and have this available for everybody to come in and do in advance the first couple times may be a little bit crowded but as we get used to it and people get their information in, it won't take nearly as long to get through the process. So we're working on getting this 
up and running, but it may have some growing pains. And one of the things that's going to be important for committee members who are carrying legislation or uh, general assembly members is that we are going to do away with the fact of uh, having ways and means bills that have got different version numbers and nobody knows which version we're working off of. Uh, one of the requirements is going to be is that if you're going to work off of a substitute, you're going to have to present that to the Ways and Means Office at least 24 hours in advance of a hearing so that we can scan them in and load them on the iPads so that we're all working off the same version. And uh, if you are on the agenda and we don't have the most recent version, then you know, you're going to be taken off the agenda for that day because we do not want to have the possibility of us uh, adopting a version that not everybody has seen or everybody's looking at. So uh, work with us this year. We're going to be working out some bugs, but ultimately I think it'll make for a smoother operation and everybody singing out of the same hymn book and off the same page and on the same verse. Um, other than that, uh, this is going to complete the organizational meeting. I would encourage members of the committee to come by the office and just sort of walk through with Brian how we do uh, the iPad so that you'll be able to comfortably make some notes on the iPad, send a bill to your email address. And uh, we're going to start with subcommittee meetings this Tuesday. Uh, we're going to have some subcommittee meetings on Tuesday and Wednesday of the various subcommittees, and we'll actually start on some legislation and probably be having some bills in full committee next week. Any questions from anybody? Um, if you don't have fiscal notes, uh, you need to come see Brian about any kind of bill that requires a fiscal note that doesn't have one. Brian's ordering the fiscal notes. Uh, we hope that we'll be able to get fiscal notes back quicker this year because one of the changes, if you did read it in the paper about three months ago, is that once the session starts, only committee chairs are able to request committee uh, fiscal notes, which will make it run a little bit smoother because in the past we've had members who may ask for three or four different fiscal notes trying to look at all the permutations and combinations for their bill and then bills that are actually moving through committee couldn't get a fiscal note because of the backlog and so this will make it a whole lot easier but if you do need a fiscal note please come see brian any other discussion if they're not we are adjourned thank you <laughs>